Let's look at some advanced features in RegCap. First, let's look at the logging feature. The logging feature is found under Applications on the left-hand menu. The logging feature records every action that happens in your RegCap project, who performed the action, and when they performed it. You can filter by event types to see when data has been exported, when design work has happened to your project, when users were added or deleted, and detailed information for specific records. It will also include all the actual data that was entered into every field in RegCap. The logging feature is a way to check any changes made inside of a record, and it's an easy way to retrieve information that may have been deleted. You can also filter by user, specific records, or a specific time range. Next, let's go into more detail about field comments. We talked about field comments when we discussed RegCap data entry in tutorial number five. To leave a comment on a specific field, click the quotation bubble next to it. This allows the person who is doing data entry to make a comment on the data that they've entered. It records the user and the date time, and when it's saved, the speech bubble turns yellow. This is an easy way to indicate to anyone scrolling through the record that there is more information about the field. As a general rule, you don't have time to scroll through every response for every record. However, REDCap allows the user to see all comments that have been made in the project in the field's comment log under Applications. Here, you'll see a list of all project comments. Users can also respond to comments by clicking on them, making this feature a great way for data enterers and project managers to communicate over specific pieces of data that may require additional clarification. It's especially helpful if the data enterers and the project manager aren't working at the same time or in the same location. You can filter comments based on a record, field, user, or keyword. Let's now look at the Data Import tool. This is found under Applications on the left-hand menu. The Data Import tool allows you to import large amounts of data into your RegCap project. You can see that I have a notice at the top of the screen that my project is still in development status. It reminds me that I should not enter real data until the project is in production mode. Once you're in production, there is more protection for your data. If you want to import data into RegCap, you'll have to do so using the CSV data import templates found in step one of the instructions on the data import tool page. Click on download your data import template with the records in rows, one record per line, or the records in columns, one record per column, and you will get a blank template. Here, I've selected records in rows, so each variable has its own column. Enter one record per row. If there's repeating instruments, you'll have to specify the instrument and instance in the RegCap Repeat Instrument and RegCap Repeat Instance columns. Each instrument and instance will be an additional row. One part of the template to pay extra attention to is the database heard of columns. Back in REDCap, the field database heard of is a checkbox field. Checkbox fields work a little differently than multiple choice questions. In regular multiple choice questions, each multiple choice answer is assigned a code. To manually enter data into Excel, enter the code, the number before the comma, to represent that choice. In checkbox fields, where one record may have more than one answer choice selected, Excel codes the checkbox fields as a series of yes-no questions for each checkbox answer. Instead of phrasing it as, do you know about databases 1, 2, and 3, the template asks, do you know database 1? Academic search complete. 1, yes, or 0, no. To manually enter data in Excel here, enter 1 for yes or 0 for no. 
The same process applies to the next question. Do you know database 2, Dynamed? Yes or no? And so forth. When exporting data in REDCap, you have to use the variable names and codes, not the text questions or answers. For example, don't enter what is your age. Instead, use the variable name age. For why did you choose to attend PCOM, use the variable name why PCOM. This requirement is one reason why it's easier to use the template for importing data, since the variable names are already listed as rows or columns. You also have to use the coded answers. For program, I can't type in osteopathic medicine or pharmacy and expect REDCap to recognize it. I have to give the code 1 or 2, or whichever number I assign to that answer. Additionally, fields that have been validated, such as numbers and dates, must contain the type of data for which they're validated. For example, I can't import text into a number field. An easy way to see all the variable names, coding, and validation types in your project is to use the codebook found on the project homepage under Quick Tasks. The codebook lists instruments and their official names, variable names and the field label that goes with them, and the field types with any validation or coding that goes with it. This is a great reference when you're trying to import data into REDCap. Please note that if you already have some data entered in your field, REDCap will give you a chance to review how you're changing your data before you make the import permanent. By default, blank values in your import file will not overwrite information that is in REDCap. So if I have a field in my REDCap file, for instance age, and I already have the person's age in REDCap, I can import the variable age with my import file and just leave it blank and it won't overwrite the age that is already saved in REDCap. On the File Import page, you can make an exception to this rule by choosing to have blank values overwrite existing values. The default is to ignore blank values so that real data cannot be overwritten by accident. However, if you are specifically trying to overwrite values, you can do it if you need to. To import a file, Include the record information that you want to import and save it as a CSV file. Then go into the Data Import tool under Applications, choose the file, and upload it to REDCap. After uploading the file, REDCap will display the data review, then ask you to confirm the import. Under Instructions for Data Review, the system shows me that I'm overwriting existing data by showing a data display table with the current data in red and the new data in black, as described in the key above the table. If I'm not okay with these changes, I can edit the CSV file and re-upload it. If you try to import data that has an error in it, such as a variable name with more than 26 characters, or a value outside of a range that you've set, the field will be highlighted with a warning in orange. If you try to import data with a critical error, for example, you try to import text into a number field, you'll get a list of all fields that cannot be imported due to an error and what the error is so that you can go back and correct it. Once you've reviewed the changes and errors and are ready to upload, select Import Data at the bottom of the screen. Finally, let's look at the Data Quality tool, which is found under Applications on the left-hand menu. The Data Quality tool is a great way to help ensure the integrity of your data. It comes with pre-programmed different rules that you can use to check your data. To look for these rules, Click Execute next to the rule you want, or All by Execute Rules at the top. The rules can locate all fields that are missing values or specific required fields, find validation errors, 
display outliers, or highlight multiple choice fields with invalid values or hidden fields that shouldn't have values. One of the most valuable uses of the Data Quality Tool is Rule H, looking for incorrect values in calculated fields. The calculations in calculated fields aren't sent to the server until you hit Save. If you were to update a calculation and it doesn't update the values for your entire project, or you import incorrect data into a calculated field, then you'll have errors that you may not know about. You can use Rule H to check your project, and it will let you know if there are any discrepancies. If there are issues, click View next to the number of errors, and you'll be able to correct the values in all calculated fields with a single click. You can also add personal data quality rules. For example, if all the participants in your project are supposed to be over 18, you might want to look for people under the age of 18. To add your rule, give it a name, and describe what the rule should involve. If you have trouble working out your rule logic, there's a link under the New Field text box titled How Do I Use Special Functions. The field will notify you about the validity of your logic for the project, with a pop-up box for an error, or a valid check mark if it's correct. You can also choose if you want the rule to work in real time, meaning that the data entry form will display a pop-up if the rule is broken when the data enterer clicks Submit. If you don't want it to work in real time, you'll only see an error if you run the rule in the data quality rules later. Click Add, and then you can execute the rule. In this case, the project has one record where the participant is below the age of 18. This video completes our REDCap tutorial. Next, you need to take a short quiz about using REDCap. After passing this quiz, an email will be sent to the REDCap administrators, and your PCOM REDCap account will be created. You will then get an email with your new REDCap account information.